I thought the show was phenomenal. Thank you. Loved it every week. You were amazing. Thanks. Uh, you you got my notes, huh? I did. Yeah. Thank you for sending those over yeah. This you're, you're welcome. Um, let's talk a little bit about what it took to prepare for sure. a role like this, for a show airing on this anniversary. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot went into that. None. Really, no prep, nothing. Let's just go out. Yep. Let's go Action. Or wear the wig or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that mullet was incredible. Oh, it was. That is, uh, is a story in itself. Mm -hmm. um, we had a bunch of looks, and we're going to do it takes place from six months before the first siege. Um, so he had different hairstyles through his whole life, obviously. But uh, we settled on that mullet, which is from the my favorite picture of Koresh yeah. wearing this rainbow shirt and like kind of like jumping at the camera but um, yeah I mean obviously I think some of your homework is done for you when you get to see these tapes and you know watch these sermons that he had and did and um, so it's the 51 day standoff and uh, no food no water electricity for most of it and then so obviously people are dropping weight and I kind of pluck so I think it was like something in the mid 30s of his aesthetic and then you drop the weight to get to that which helps a lot and changes your cadence and walk and all that and guitar so like not you were not eating I mean you were I don't yeah, know, dieting the, that however you yeah, or something like that the beauty of it is I had four and a half months to do it so 30 pounds in that time is six you know roughly six a month so it wasn't crazy wasn't fun either, but um, yeah, so, and then uh, he was an incredible guitarist, played all over the U.S. and was trying to get an album made, and um, so studying guitar, and I have my teachers on South Austin at South Austin Music, which is rad, still go to him, Richard. Oh, you picked it up and you're like, oh. yeah, yeah, so I have a, a few guitars that were gifted, and I had picked it up earlier, uh, like 10 years ago, Jesse Plemons from FNL was teaching me for like a couple of weeks, quit, yeah. as we do. <laughs> and, uh, and then I knew it was going to have to be a job for me to just hold it and keep it. So that's what, that's what happened. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then I heard that, you know, at one point getting ready for it, so overwhelming and yeah. feeling the anxiety of it, the pressure of it, you even maybe had thoughts about the yeah, um, I think it goes down to being in my apartment for four months, reading this every day, reading about Dave, his upbringing, and obviously the end result. And I think at times, not so much the pressure, but just you're just in this bubble. You create this environment and immerse yourself with it all. So sometimes it gets the best out of you, losing the weight and not sleeping much and um, and then I kind of sent an email to my team, just an investigatory one of just, well, what's the repercussion here if I do kind of bail out on this six, five weeks before? And they're like, um, I don't know, let's check. So I'm very, very grateful I didn't. But um, yeah, you have those beats. I think, you know. Self-doubt for anybody is a big one. So when that seeps in, you, you start listening to it, it can take a hold, you know? I think for a lot of people, I think we're probably around the same age. But, uh, of course, I knew about this. I moved to Texas mm -hmm. like 16 years ago. and But didn't know the full story. And then you just hear the things about it. Like, yeah. oh, it's cold and these great, crazy people. And I definitely yeah. think, from my perspective and talking to other people, the show made people start thinking a little bit more about what really did happen and what were these people really like. Is that, was that kind of a part of your goal with all of it? Just making people yeah. think and learn more about the whole story? I think you do humanize that one side, the Davidians, and not just Koresh. And um, obviously during that time, it was pretty sensationalized and one-sided. Um, and the more you do that research and the more you dive into it, the more motivation you have to tell the truth of what went down and how it went down and to show both sides you know we optioned Gary Nezer's book who was the lead FBI negotiator and um, David Thibodeau who was one of nine survivors um, of the final siege and um, so both of those guys were on set which was awesome 
um, I would text Thibodeau. He would be on set every time I'm on set, and I would text him, you know, a psalm or ask for him to send me something that Dave would say in certain situations if I want to keep a little, you know, surprise for the actors or whatnot and throw a curveball or something on the day. And uh, he was, um, he was awesome. Wow. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about Texas. Bring obviously, it. Obviously, with uh, being here for Friday Night Lights, yeah. you know, years later and doing this show and kind of making yeah. this your home a little bit, you know. Oh, it's home. It's, it's home. Yeah. Um, I'm rooted. You know, why? Why Austin? What is it you love about it? Um, <clears throat> One, I didn't know where Austin was when I got FNL. Uh, maybe even Texas, to be honest. Canadian, tiny town. Um, but I love it. I, the heat's, I don't think you ever get used to the heat. People are like, oh, give it uh, three years, four years. It's like, no. You still sweat like it's out of, you know, yeah. style when you go out there. But um, I love it. I think it's the people that make any city. And this one kind of encompasses that. And uh, very, you know, art, artist first. And I love the struggle and that part of it where you see all these guys. Any day of the week, you can go find someone that's just dying for their craft, you know, and I love that. It's infectious. Well, real quick, so the last couple of years we have had the African Children's Choir. Yes, on our show. just over there, a block yeah. over. Um, yeah, so we've had, they've come oh, on really? Tuesday, Austin, awesome. on the morning show, and it's awesome. one of our favorite days. Yeah. It's been like the last three years, I think. Awesome. So, real quick, if you could just talk a little bit about that and, and your work. <clears throat> yeah, all day. Uh, ACC is an organization that's obviously rooted in Africa, and um, it's been around over 30 years, very transparent, and they take kids from war-torn areas, uh, villages, slums, um, and house them, school feed them, and create a choir within this group that travels the world and creates awareness, and it pays for their education all the way through college. And um, I was there last year, and they're building this first international school an hour outside Uganda, um, Kampala. And um, so that basically means that's the last fundraiser was for that international school. So it basically means that, you know, having international studies is going to empower them and also give them a better education for them to get out of, you know, go to even Harvard or go to all these places and it's starting to work so it's awesome.